All right, so let's go ahead and take a look and see how much I got paid out in dividends for the last month. So we're gonna go ahead and kind of drop down here and we're gonna kind of take a look at my portfolio, see how it's doing. And then again, we're gonna see how much we made in dividend income and also talk about some of the dividend increases I had coming in just over the last uh, little while here. So you'll see my portfolio here. It's nicely uh, named Dividend Dennis. Uh, we're sitting about $23,409. It is a little bit lower than we've had as far as a peak. Uh, you can see here just in the last day from the last time, of course, of this recording, it's $46. Uh, and then in the last week, it's been down $844 in gains for my portfolio, of course. Everybody's is different. Um, and then if we go to the last month, we're almost down $1,300. But no fear, we are long-term dividend investors, so we are going to keep on investing long-term. So I'm going to show you what I've been doing as, as well as like all the dividends I got paid out this month. And this is what's really cool about dividend investing is that even when the market is down, I'm still getting paid out my dividends and I'm also still getting dividend increases, which is my favorite thing when it comes to long-term investing. Now, of course, this is not all I do. I do have other types of investing as well too. So just something to keep in mind, this is not everything I have. I have a retirement account. I also have a growth portfolio as well too. That is just strictly growth. So let's kind of take a look here in the last month, uh, some of my uh, different sectors here with uh, my portfolio have not been doing as well. Uh, the biggest one right now that's been doing well is my financials. Uh, and this is why I like being diverse a little bit here. Uh, so you can see all of mine in the sector in the last month, even with the market going down the way that it has, has been doing really, really well. So I'm pretty happy with that and how everything is looking in this sector. So let's go ahead and take a look and see really quick my activities here. So I wanted to show you this last week when the market was down. Um, I kind of talked about this before in a previous episode, but look, I did a lot of deposits this last week. So on the 22nd, I did 300. The 23rd, I did 200. The 24th, I did 800. 25th, I did another 250. And then I have right over here uh, for Monday. Uh, so I did 250 on Friday. A hundred bucks uh, is going to be for Monday, but that 250 originally that I did for Friday was supposed to be for Monday, but because of the way the market was going, I kind of just went with it and said, hey, let's just go ahead and invest extra on Friday in case the market starts recovering. But I still wanted to put a hundred bucks in on Monday. So I have this weird thing where when the market's down, I tend to want to throw more money down towards it. I don't know if the market's going to keep going down or if it's going to go back up. Now, uh, right over here, you can see my trades. I did some manual buys, which are, I don't know why that's up there, but uh, right over here, I did a manual buy for Home Depot, Apple, and Amazon, and then the other three, I just let M1 kind of do its thing, which is the platform, by the way, that I'm using. Uh, I'm using M1 Finance. If you guys are interested in checking them out, they are still going to be doing a $30 bonus when you use my link in the show notes down below. Help support out the channel, which is obviously all free for you guys, but it gets you started on your investment, which is important. So click on that afterwards, and you guys are going to be really thankful that you got started with investing for a long term. Okay, so let's take a look here. So this buy here for Johnson & Johnson is about 277 nothing big. Uh, Texas Instrument about 732, Amazon 10 bucks, which was the manual buy. Lockheed Martin almost 20 bucks, Home Depot 30 bucks. Home Depot is becoming one of my favorite uh, long-term investing uh, stocks. And then Apple here another thirty dollars. So you can see I'm still investing even when the market is going down, which is really tough to do for a lot of people. But hopefully these videos and other people talking about it while the market's down gets you encouraged to not be fearful uh, during that market downturn. So let's go to my activities here and let's take a look at my dividends. So I'm going to go ahead and filter that out and let's go ahead and see what we made for February. So if we go down here, we can see the very first one is AT&T. We made a whopping $14.56. Now, I'm still really debating on if I want to keep Home Depot or sorry, AT&T or not. Um, you guys can let me know in the comments down below what you think of AT&T. Um, if you kept it, sold it, whatever. I'm pretty much broken, broke even with them overall as far as stock price and dividend payouts. Um, so we'll kind of see how that goes long term. You guys can subscribe to see what ends up happening long term there. So February 11th, we got paid out from Apple for $3.60, so that was nice. And on the 12th, we got paid out from Ally right over here for a total combined of $2.47. And 
And then let's keep going here. We got also on the 12th. Oh, no, that was the same one. Also on the 16th here, we got from Aviv. I don't know why it pops up two of them. Uh, one of them was for $3.90. And the other one, let me clear that up, was uh, for $0.59. Cents. And then we got Hasbro, also on the 16th. Uh, one of them paid out for $0.24. Cents. The other one was $2.04. I did sell out of Hasbro, so I don't have them anymore in my portfolio. So that was, the, I believe, the last dividend I'll be getting from them. I uh, just didn't really see the opportunity growth. Uh, they actually didn't increase their dividends again for like, I don't know how many times in a row they haven't increased it. I think it was two years in a row at this point. So I'm just really not interested in holding on to a company that is not potentially going to increase their dividend, but I also don't see the value going up as much as some of the other stocks that I have. Because just because a company doesn't pay out dividends anymore doesn't mean I'm like completely fearful of them. I actually still have Ross in my portfolio and they discontinued their dividend, I think last year around this time. Uh, so I'm not too hesitant about keeping a company long term if I see opportunity. Um, also on the 16th, so the 16th was a was a really really good payout date. We got P&G uh, right over here uh, for a dollar and 77 cents, and then also Realty Income paid us out on the 16th, uh, which is our monthly paying dividend uh, for two dollars and 91 cents. Actually. Before we see our total, I want to see how much we got paid out in increased difference between last month and this month. So, and then the last dividend for the month was from Costco. Uh, they paid out a whopping 94 cents. So not a crazy ton, uh, but that's totally okay there. Uh, really quick, before we add up that full total, what was our last couple times with Realty Income? I just like seeing this since it's a monthly stock, kind of like to see how it increases. I don't really buy too much right now with Realty Income um, because they're, well, at least at the time, they were over $60 and based off of their dividend yield and everything else, once they hit 60 for me, they don't become as uh, as attractive for me as far as a, a price point for me to enter in. So you can see the, that last one was $2.91. The one before that was $2.83. So, you know, a decent amount of increase there. We had $2.79 a couple of months ago. 265 so you're seeing this nice increase with uh realty income obviously it's not gonna be anywhere nearly as much as some of the other companies because again i'm not buying a lot into them but nonetheless it is still really cool now let's take a look at all of these dividends added together and we are going to go into this right over here and this is my dividend investing spreadsheet uh, i think everything looks good here on camera for you guys so you can see this so this is everything that I put together for me. If you guys are interested in this, I do have this entirely for free. So you guys can check it out in the show notes down below. Um, if you guys want to support me anyway by getting that for free, you guys can click on any of my affiliate links. Those help support the channel at no additional cost to you, but this spreadsheet is entirely free. So you can see here, um, so I added up my totals here for February 2021. So we made a total of $33.03 for the month. Uh, which is really awesome because if you compare that to 2020, we only made $2.35. So really healthy increase from the year prior. Um, there's really nothing that we worried about from 2019. And then if we look at the middle quarter or the middle month of the last quarter, that's what I like to compare to, we made $30.20. So not a crazy increase, but still an increase nonetheless, which is still really important to pay attention to because we can't compare this properly to last month or the you know end of 2020, which was December. We can't really do that because the companies that pay out are different. So I'm trying to focus in on the companies that pay out those same months since they pay out you know every three. So you know February and November are typically those same companies that paid out. Not all the time, but most of the time. So still a nice increase. Um, hopefully it was more. You know I was hoping for it to be more. I should say, um, but nonetheless, still not too bad. The first two months of the year. Let me close that up. First two months of the year, we've earned a total of $58.08 thus far in dividends, which by the way, in case you're curious, I've been reinvesting all of that back into the portfolio, not from the companies that pay them out because M1 Finance works a little different, but I have been just investing them entirely on there. Uh, really quick, so this doesn't clock out, there we go. Uh, so if we look at that, 5808, that destroys entirely what we made all of 2020 
uh, right there, which was $9.63 um, for the first three quarters. And we're only down to the first two. So we still got a whole nother month to add to this. Um, you could see we even destroyed what we made in Q2. And we might even destroy what we made in Q3 if we add up the total for March once all those stocks come in and pay out dividends, which it's Typically, the best month for payouts when it comes to dividend investors is the third uh, the third month in every quarter. That's generally when a lot of the stocks, if you have a decent amount of stocks, uh, end up paying out during those times. So I'm excited to see where that lies. You can see here our average because we are investing um, for long-term growth. Uh, right over here, you can see 2904 is our monthly average between the the two different months that we've gotten so far and then our total dividends that actually have been paid out is $250.61 so not too shabby there for now obviously we're going to want to keep on building and keep on growing that so that way we can have dividend in, uh, dividend income coming in for long term now let's go ahead and kind of jump back here for a moment so what i wanted to do was go into my holdings and actually show you something here. What was I going to show you? Oh, let's go to the, oh, for some reason, it's not clicking. Okay. Oh, I think my internet went out. Yeah. So my internet definitely went out there for us. So what we're going to do, let's see if it still shows me here. Um, so I have my DLR currently up here on, uh, on the front page here. I'm not gonna be able to click into my news because the internet technically is out for me. So that's why my M1 Finance kind of didn't keep me logged in. So Realty Income is one of the stocks I currently have in my portfolio, trading at $134. Um, normally what I'll do is I'll click on the news right over here for you guys. Um, by the way, this is seekingalpha.com in case you're curious. Uh, but I'll click on the news here. Uh, and when the company announces a, a dividend payout, uh, usually once a quarter. Uh, sometimes if they do dividend increases, which most of the companies I do have like to increase their dividends, I go in there and see if they announce their dividend, which they their dividend increase, which uh, DLR did end up doing just this uh, most recent time. And so they increase their dividend by 3.6%, if I'm not mistaken, which is actually better than their five-year average. Normally, I like these averages for the five years to be much higher than 2.6, uh, but I am just choosing to keep them in my portfolio for different reasons. Um, I do see some opportunity for, for the value of the stock to go up aside from just the dividends. And so at 3.6%, this is much higher, so that's good. And what that really means is that now I'm gonna get paid out more for having the same dividends already in my portfolio. And so for us, the way we kind of look at this, uh, I'm trying to see if I can remember what it was because, I, again, I can't click on it. At least I don't think I can. Yeah, I still can't because my internet is still down. So the way this ends up working out for us is with that dividend increase, that 3.6%, I believe if I'm not mistaken, ended up being $0.04 cents extra per share that you own. I think it was one twelve, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it was 112 because now it's 116. So yeah, it was four cents increase. Look at me remembering stuff. How great. So it was 112 and then it, inc oh geez, that line went down way too fast. Let's go here. And then it went to $1.16. So this is now what I'm gonna be getting paid out uh, with all the dividends I have. And I have about five shares. It's a little bit more than five shares. I'm trying to see if I can bring it up on my phone here. Uh, so it's a little bit more than five shares. So the way I like to do this is kind of show people here uh, with this calculator. So if we have, let's just say exactly five shares and it goes up four cents, it's obviously 20, 20 cents. Um, you can do math there, but it's 20 cents. It doesn't seem like a lot of money, right? Increasing it and getting 20 extra cents. Now that's not on top of the already dollar and 12 cents I was expecting to get paid. This is just extra money that I'm gonna get paid for owning this stock, having done nothing extra. So we got a 3.6% dividend increase, which is like effectively a raise for me for having not done any extra work. So 20 cents is not gonna do me anything. But over time, if I have a lot of shares of these companies that do increases, these dividend increases can have huge implications on how much I'm going to make. So let me, actually, let me go a little bit bigger on my screen here, or is that gonna be too big? So let's go ahead and do this. So. So that's 20 cents, but that's per quarter. So in a year, that's 80 cents that I'm gonna earn extra for the stocks that I already have. 80 cents, again, is not the most in the world, but that would mean that I would have to buy pretty much half a share 
of this stock in order to get that same dividend payout. So with their stock being like 134, you know, I would have to be paying a decent amount into that stock to get again that extra 80 cents if they hadn't increased their dividend. So for me, I see that as a huge win opportunity for me to be able to continue to build up on my dividends. There's there's this big f uh, focus that I like to pay attention to is that's yield on cost. So when you buy into a stock right away, let me kind of jump back down here. This is your, your yield on cost right down here. So your current dividend yield is because whatever you're buying the stock price for, that is the dividend yield you get. Let's say you don't buy any more of that stock and then they increase their stuff just like we saw here that you know I'm showing you, that 3.6%. Well, if you didn't buy any more shares and you own what you own already, now you're making more money for having put in what you already put in, which means your yield actually goes up. And that's so awesome because all of a sudden you're getting paid out more for having done nothing extra. And it's it's such a beautiful thing, honestly. I, it's one of the most passive ways you can make money. Uh, for me personally, I, I do also focus in on some real estate stuff as well too. But with real estate, you have to put a little bit more work and effort on the front end um, to be able to get stuff on the back end where with dividend income, as long as you're paying attention to news articles and the companies that you're invested in, like this stuff can be really effective for you long term um, because they're going to be paying you out with these dividend increases and you're going to be making extra money. Now, of course, if you keep buying into these companies at different price points, your yield on cost is going to kind of fluctuate. There are calculators you could figure out on how that works. Um, I did have a calculator. I don't know if I'm going to be able to bring it up. Let me see if my internet's back. I think it might be back. Hold on. So I think it might be back. Uh, so right now I did kind of like this idea here of uh, owning five shares, $134, which is the DLR stock price, the annual dividend payout, which was 464, the uh, dividend annual growth rate. I so this is 2.56 percent. So let me do 2.56 stock uh, annual price. I think it goes up. What's the? Let's see if I could bring this up now because it's it's back. Maybe not. Ooh, internet's fun. Well, I can't actually do the, the number changes here, but I can leave what I had up earlier. Um, so this was at 5% for the dividend increase. So this isn't technically where DLR was, but effectively the uh, investing with dividends being reinvested in the companies, the total value of my portfolio in 14 years was gonna be worth 20, uh, just for this one stock, by the way, for five shares, $2,136.47. I believe my initial price point on this was $670 or so, give or take. Um, because I would be doing dividend uh, reinvestments, I would be buying more shares. So I started with the five, granted it was like 5.0 something on M1. So because it'd be reinvesting, it'd be 8.05. Uh, I would have gotten paid out in that 14 years only $617, which doesn't seem like a lot, but the dividend, or sorry, the uh, face value of the stock has gone up too, which is really good. And then the annualized uh, return percentage would be 8.64%. So not the best, but not, not terrible. Um, I ideally would like to be somewhere around like 10% on this number. Um, again, I can't readjust my numbers here because my internet keeps going out. So uh, for me, I just really focus in on trying to take advantage of where I can in certain areas. Uh, with DLR, the reason I keep staying with it, even though it doesn't have some of the best returns, it is in an industry uh, that I would personally like to be staying with just because they are in an area for um, servers for the internet. I like lost track for a second. Servers for internet um, and, and websites and everything. So I kind of want to just like be part of that and see where it goes in the next couple of years. Um, I think it'll be exciting. So I'm holding on to that. But if otherwise, I wouldn't probably be with a company that has that lower annual growth for dividends, as well as maybe not getting that higher annual return, which I would be hoping for closer to 10% a year minimum. Like that's usually my minimums. But um, sometimes things can change just based off of what's going on in in, you know my portfolio it's a small percentage in comparison to the overall thing which also kind of gives me an opportunity to test things out right because with this you know not being at my highest level if something changes in the next two three years and this you know or this stock goes really really well so like you know in two years if i look back at this video and i'm like hey you know good choice dennis um, i'll be happy with that and it was a nice small portion and i'll see some good growth 
If I was wrong, it wouldn't impact my overall portfolio to a detriment, uh, where I know sometimes people can do that, where they solely focus on like one, two, three, four stocks. And that's cool, but I can't personally do that. I like long term. I like, you know, getting the idea that in like 14, 15 years, I will have this really good income coming in. So that way I can do all the things that I want. You know, $1,000 a month, $1,000 a month is great. But my goal is to get 10000 maybe eight to $10,000 a month minimum. So that way I can live off that money if I wanted to, or I can continue to do other great things with it as well. So it's all about long-term goals. Things will change as well too. Like I said, subscribe to the channel if you want to see those changes happening, because I'm not going to know for sure if I'm going to stay to the same path, or if I do, you guys will be able to know that as well as we follow along. I mentioned earlier too, if you guys want to check out M1 Finance, I'll have a link for them in the show notes down below. They are still doing the 30% or $30 bonus for using my link down below once you sign up and do your initial deposit. Uh, obviously, some restrictions may apply, so check out those when it comes to signing up. And of course, I want you to keep on watching because I know that's going to be the most important thing when it comes to being consistent on the platform of any kind of investing. So my video is going to be right over here. Click on that and keep on learning and keep on growing. My name is Dennis and I'll see you in that next video.